Today, we are finally gonna bring everyone out there up to speed on how to use a flash. That's it. If using this thing with one of these things has mystified you, well, the wait is over. You're welcome. Hi everyone and welcome to Pal the Tech. Today I'm introducing a brand new series for this channel called Flash Basics for Fujifilm Cameras. And the video that you're watching right now is lesson one. I'm doing this series because first off, using a flash is so important for so many different kinds of photography. And two, using a flash is so intimidating for so many different camera users. So intimidating in fact, that a number of photographers simply give up trying to learn to use a flash and they never take that that next important step. First, a disclaimer to some YouTube viewers out there. This is not going to be a rushed 30 second looped, loop, looping to looping to looping to looping to poorly edited pop music vertical video. Not with this. We're gonna take our time. We're gonna go through this together, step by step, starting with the very basics of Flash and then moving to more advanced topics. In other words, we're going to read C-Spot Run before we move on to the Iliad in Russian. So if you've got either an attention deficit disorder or you're already an experienced Flash user, I will leave links in the description down below this video where you can play Tetris or shop online. No hard feelings. You can go now and I'll catch you in the next video. For the rest of you, let's get started. Now, the idea behind using a flash, first and foremost, is to add more light into your scene. And in that sense, it's sort of a way of adding more exposure to your exposure triangle. But besides that obvious use for flash, using a flash also brings two other really important benefits into your photography. First, you can use your flash, or I should say your flash's duration, to actually freeze your subject's motion without having to increase your shutter speed. More on this awesome benefit in a future video. And secondly, you can use your flash as an adjustment layer to the existing light in your photo. You know how when you use Photoshop or Capture One to use an adjustment layer? A flash can work just like that. You can use it as a way to paint over or add to the existing light that's already in your scene. Suppose you already have an existing light source right behind your subject. Say you're outside and the sun is behind your subject. You can use a flash to paint on light, right? And add to that light for your scene. Okay, how do I turn it? Ah! Fujifilm makes about six different types of native flash units. And with the exception of the EF-X8, which comes included with the X-T2, X-T3, and so forth, I prefer to use third-party flash units such as these Godox units right here. These are reasonably priced, they offer a lot of features, and they work fairly well. Now, just to be clear, Godox is not sponsoring this video series, and they have no idea that I'm even making this video. When purchasing a third-party flash, some of them will work with Fujifilm's automatic metering system and some of them won't. I prefer those that offer TTL metering as one of their options. TTL stands for through the lens. This allows the camera and the flash to share exposure and setting data so that you can use the flash in an automatic mode as an option. So think of TTL flash mode as being similar to setting all of the dials on your Fujifilm camera to A and letting the camera take over and judge the exposure. So basically what's happening is once you have the TTL flash set on your camera, right? And you're aiming your camera at a subject and your camera is looking through the lens and figuring out how much light is already there in your scene, it conveys that information to the flash and it tells the flash to use a specific amount of light to make sure that your scene is properly exposed. Of course, you can always override this and configure your flash settings manually, but sometimes it's nice to have that option of fully automatic. TTL will give you that. However, just to be clear for this video series, you're gonna be learning how to use the flash in manual mode for almost all situations. So if you don't have a flash already, I would recommend picking up either the TTL T685 or the TT350, but any decent third-party flash will do. I do recommend though that you get one that is made for Fujifilm cameras. On the Godox units themselves, they'll have a little F written right on the unit. You see that right there? If you're unsure between these two, I would say go with the TT685 as the larger size will give you room to grow. Now, once you have your flash, there are a few other accessories you're gonna wanna consider getting. Most notably, a wireless transmitter, okay? They look like this, and an umbrella, okay? <laughs> we are not gonna cover these today. These are gonna be in the very next video. 
Okay, so you've got your flash and you've got your camera. Now don't worry about it if you don't have the Godox unit, that's fine, just use whatever flash unit you have. So step one, turn on the flash. Now if you go into your camera menu settings, there is a section for flash, obviously, see that right there? And you can tell if your flash is properly connected to your Fujifilm camera because when you turn it on, additional options on the menu become enabled. Now as I said, this is lesson one, very beginning, so we're gonna put our flash into TTL. On the Godox unit, you simply press press this button right here, and you keep pressing it to cycle through the various flash modes until you get to TTL. Make sure that TTL is the large version of TTL in the viewfinder. Now there are a number of items in your flash menu on your Fujifilm camera, and by the end of this video series, we are gonna go over all of them. However, we're gonna start with only the most important ones today, and that would be the one at the very top that says flash function setting. If you notice the very top, it says shoe mount flash and this will change depending upon what type of flash unit is connected to your camera. If you connect the Fujifilm EX F8 flash to your camera, look at how it just changed. You see that right there? Now there are four types of flash categories that you can use with your Fujifilm camera. The first is the EF X8. This is the little pop-up flash that comes with the X-T2, X-T3 and so forth or you can buy it separately. The second one is called sync terminal and this is for flash units that are connected to your camera via the sync terminal located right here. You see that? Third is shoe mount flash, and that's what you're going to be using the most often. Any flash basically that you attach to your camera's hot shoe mount right here. And finally, master optical. That is a flash unit that currently functions as a master flash for the Fujifilm wireless optical flash remote control system. We're not going to be going into that type of flash as we're going to concentrate instead on third-party flash units connected to the hot shoe mount. Since I put my flash in TTL, mode, it automatically knows that and it shows TTL. However, you can change that by rotating the rear command dial. Check this out. You can go TTL, manual, multi, and then off. Again, we're focusing today on just TTL. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you're making your setting change to the menu on your Fujifilm camera, it is also affecting the flash because this particular flash talks to the Fujifilm camera and so forth. This is the exact same thing as using, say, a third-party Viltrox lens, right, for autofocus. The Viltrox lens has these electronic terminals. You see them right here? And even though it's a third-party lens, the lens talks to the camera and will share EXIF data. The camera can set the aperture and so forth. So watch this. I'm going to make the setting change using the rear command dial. I want you to look at the back of the flash while I do that. You see how when I rotate it here, it changes it right on the flash unit itself. Now the next item in this menu area is called TTL mode. If your TTL mode is grayed out and you don't see it, that's because you need to set your shutter speed dial to automatic. Once you do, you're going to need to go back into the flash menu and you'll see it enabled. Let's go through these. If you have this set to standard, what that means is that the flash will fire with every single shot you take, regardless of lighting conditions. So if you're outside on a big, bright, sunny day, the flash is still going to fire. And you would want to have it set this way if you intend on using your flash as a fill flash. More on that in future videos, but just know that that setting pretty much sets up your flash to fire all the time. Now, slow sync setting is interesting, and that is used for when you want Want the light in the background of your scene to be visible. Meaning you don't just want, and you've seen this in flash photos, where the subject is brightly lit, you can see every detail, and the entire background is black and dark. You can't see a thing, okay? So by setting it to slow sync, what this basically does is slow down your shutter speed to what your camera would normally use if you were not using a flash. Basically exposing for that background lighting. And then what it does is when you take the shot, it freezes your subject, right? And you end up with a combination of a well-lit subject, but also that background lighting that you can see. Have a look at this photo right here. The first photo was taken with no flash at all. You see that right there, but you can see the background lighting. The second photo was taken with TTL mode on standard. And here the subject is a lot brighter, but the background lighting, not so much. And the third photo was taken with slow sync. And you can see how the background lighting and the ambiance in the background
background really carries through. Now there is actually a third option in this menu. However, in order to see it, you have to put all three of your exposure triangle settings, your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture into automatic. Let's go ahead and do that now. Aperture into automatic, ISO into automatic, and shutter speed into automatic. Basically, you've just made the camera fully automatic. However, when you now go back into your flash menu under flash function setting into TTL mode, have a look at this. You see flash auto, it's a new choice. Now flash auto is basically a fully automatic mode. Your camera will only fire the flash if it's needed in order to properly expose the scene. And that's why you've got to have everything set to automatic mode so the camera can make the best decision that it can. Again, when you have it on flash auto, the camera only fires the flash if it needs to. The next one on the list is zoom. You could either set it to a specific value or you could set it to auto. And this directly affects what is set on the flash. Have a look at this. Now, most of the time you're gonna wanna set this to auto because most of the time you're gonna be using lenses that communicate with the camera and the camera knows exactly what focal length you currently have it set for. For example, I'm using the 18 to 55 millimeter Fujinon lens and if I set it to automatic, okay, as I rotate the lens, watch this, I'm rotating the lens and look at the values on the back of the flash unit while I'm rotating the lens. And you would use the manual setting, obviously, if you're using a fully manual lens like this setting an artisan's 35 millimeter that has no contact points, no electrical points at all. There is no communication at all between this lens and this camera. The camera has no idea what the focal length is, so you need to tell it so that it can tell the flash. The next choice is called LED. And you have a few choices here. Note also that this same menu option is available if you go outside the flash function setting. It's also right down here. See that? Same exact options. Now the LED light setting menu option is only for flash units that have an LED light in them, right? So what you can do is you can set it as either a catch light, which means that it'll fire off the flash, but it'll also illuminate the LED light. So you get that nice little catch light in your subject's eyes. That's one option you get. Or you can use it as autofocus assist and your camera will use the LED light on your flash to help with autofocus and being able to do a better job at that. And there's the option here to use it as a catch light and also as a way to help your camera autofocus at the same time. And lastly, you can just have it turned off. Now, the sync menu controls the timing of your flash, meaning at what point, right, when you press the shutter button, does the flash actually go off? From the moment you press the shutter button, when does the flash actually fire with regard to your shutter curtain being open or closed? Now, first curtain means that the flash fires immediately right as you press the shutter button, right the second the shutter opens up. Now, second curtain means that the flash will fire at the end of the process of taking your shot, just before the shutter closes. So what's the difference between the two? Well, the difference becomes apparent if you're capturing motion blur in your shot and you're wanting to leave, say, a trail of light. This whole process is gonna be covered in a future video. I really don't wanna get off track right now and explain all this, but just know, for now, to get started, put it into first curtain sync until we get into those more advanced topics. Now, auto FP high speed sync means that your camera will pulse light during the entire time your shutter is open. And this allows you to use a much higher flash sync speed than you normally would. Again, most of the time, you'll wanna leave it on first curtain. And lastly, there's angle. Now, angle widens or narrows the angle of light that is coming from your flash. And if you go in here, there's a few options. Flash power priority will give you more range, further range for your flash, but you're gonna have less coverage over your entire scene. So instead of blasting light all over your scene, flash power priority concentrates that light into one specific area. It narrows the angle. Now standard is exactly what it says. It matches a standard picture angle to what you're shooting. And that's what I keep mine on most of the time. Now even coverage priority gives you a bit more coverage, but your light is gonna now be spread out over your overall scene. Again, I keep this on standard pretty much all the time.
Now I have some homework for you to do. That's right, homework for you to do before you attend this next lesson number two that's coming up. What I want you to do is put your camera into one 1 25th of a second shutter speed. Make sure that your ISO is set to 160 and then take your aperture out of automatic so you can be choosing whatever aperture you want while you're shooting. Then what I want you to do is get an object like a little toy, a figure, something like that and make sure that you have a light source way in the back as well. You want to have the scene kind of lit in the back with some atmospheric or practical lighting, but you don't want that light too bright. Make sure that you've got your flash on TTL mode and attached to your camera. Remember that TTL mode right here is grayed out because we are forcing a shutter speed of 1 1 25th of a second. And I'm doing that because I want for this homework assignment for you to get a little bit away from the all automatic version of the flash. So with it set up this way, what I want you to do is rotate your aperture ring until you have the background, not the foreground, not the subject, but the background properly exposed. Have a look at this. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the aperture ring. There we go. I am all the way wide open right now. And if there's still not enough light to properly expose the background of your scene, go ahead and raise your ISO to maybe something like this. Now go ahead and take your first shot. And most likely what you'll find is that the flash is too overpowering, right? Now what you wanna do in that case is do not adjust any of the dials on your camera. You've already dialed in what you want the background to look like, okay? The lighting in the background, you don't wanna change that. What you wanna change is the compensation of the flash power. How much power, how much brightness, how much flash is being blasted on your main subject. And what you do is you go into your flash settings and then go over here. You see this right there? This will allow you to adjust the power of your flash. And you do so by rotating the rear command dial. And these are stops of exposure. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down for this example by three stops, you see that? Now that I've done that, I'm gonna take another shot. Have a look at that, the subject just looks better. It doesn't have that bright flash in the face look that you see in amateur shots. It looks better, you're on your way, you got this, you can do this. What you need to remember is the very first thing you do, expose for the background of your scene, okay? Get that looking right, then take a shot. And most likely that shot's not gonna look very good unless you nail it and you're lucky. And then go back in and adjust the power of the flash so that your subsequent shots look great. That's what you want to do. Try that out. That's your homework, okay? That's it. We're not getting into any other advanced topics. We're not talking about wireless transmitters. We're not talking about umbrellas. We're not talking about anything else. You need to get these fundamentals down first. This is what's important about flash. Understanding how to dial it back and kind of use it as a supplement to the already existing light in your scene. In our next lesson, lesson number two, we are going to focus on using the flash in all manual mode, no TTL, which is the main way that I want you to be using your flash in most of your photography. We are running a marathon here, not a sprint. We're going slow and I want you to try out what I was showing you today. Don't jump too far ahead, but don't be afraid to experiment as well. The worst you do is you fill up your SD card. So what? Erase them, try it again. Keep practicing, keep understanding that you can basically adjust your flash using all of the settings in your Fuji film menu. And if you can't do that, if you have a completely different third party flash, then learn how to do it on the flash. It doesn't matter which way you do it. What matters is the process. Get set for your scene, expose for that background, make that background lighting looking good, fire off the flash, and then adjust the flash to suit the look that you want. I have barely scratched the surface of using a flash and modifying light and all of those sorts of things. And that's exactly how I want to do it. For too long, photographers or people who are new to photography will see a flash and they'll get intimidated because when people jump in, there's so much to it. It's a big topic. And I want you to be comfortable with the very, very, very basics first. And you should be able, before we go into lesson two, to be able to take a shot, right, of a subject and have it not look like you were taking it with a flash. Does that make sense? I hope so. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching this first in the series video on Flash. I hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will see you again in a new video very soon. Take care.